Hello, welcome to uh, Melco here in Denver, Colorado with Mariah Carey. We'll turn her off for a minute. Nate's here with us also. We're doing a Christmas special this morning. We're going to be talking about digitizing designs for Christmas stockings as well as hooping um, different areas of different types of Christmas stockings. So with a uh, little more to talk about <laughs> and I'm going to switch it over to Nate. Here's Nate. Um, hey guys, uh, yeah, like Mike said, we're going to be, and unfortunately, we're going to be swapping back and forth to be able to control the, the camera and whatnot. Um, we are going to be setting up uh, names and files and stuff for sewing out on stockings. Um, one of the big things uh, for me is uh, how do I even deal with all the different um, fabrics? And we have a, a ton of um, fabrics avail available. Um, through all the different stockings that we can get, but how do you actually deal with that? And so one way to do that is to go to the fabric store. Now, I mean, so you've got possibly extras with super fuzzy tops or um, burlap is a big thing right now. And I just went to the fabric store and I got a remnant. Um, so check the remnant bins. Um, also, just pieces of felt are good to, to test out on. Um, and if you can't get something that has the thickness um, that you're looking for, go ahead and just double a few things up and sew on that. So if you have a really thick stocking that you can't quite get how thick this is or how furry this is, um, go get a scrap of uh, minky or some faux fur like this. And if it's super puffy and quilted, just throw a couple layers of felt underneath of it and test sew that scrap before you ever get to the final product. It's something I've done for years and years. Um, also, uh, thrift stores are a great place to look for stuff like that that you can use for that too. So um, uh, puffy coat sleeves are, are kind of in that same vein as well. So give that a shot. Um, definitely mock up something that is as close to what you're going to be doing as possible. So let's actually uh, go back and look at Design Shop. Let me pull this up. And we'll look at how to set up some names for stockings. So to start out, um, I'm just going to use some simple lettering and spell it horribly. Spelling is not as optional as I would like it to be sometimes. Um, and right now, I just have just the simple default block um, right here. What I would typically do. Uh, is, and I didn't grab this, and I should have. I thought about it once, and I didn't make it happen. Um, I will grab the tops of the stockings, and I will actually measure them. And if you have vector, this is a really handy place for that. Um, if not, you can use a complex fill for the same thing. But that's got to go. Tools, options, preferences, preferences thank you. So you're turning off the beat sound, Digitizing you don't like sound, that? turning off. <laughs> Cannot handle it. Have to have whatever music I'm listening to going, not the beeping of the software. So I will just uh, create a vector rectangle that is the size of um, the top of my stocking. And I, you can colorize it whatever you want. Give yourself a nice outline so you can actually see what you're doing. And all I did to do that was grab the vector tool and then grab the kind of rectangle tool, click in one corner, click in another. Is that the size that I want it to be? No, probably not. Um, but that doesn't matter to me as long as I can come down here and specify exactly. And this is one of the few times that I will actually turn off the aspect ratio lock so that I can specify I want this to be exactly six inches wide, and I want this to be exactly uh, three inches tall. So Nate, you're making this uh, this vector rectangle is just giving you a reference of, of the maximum size or the area that you want to sew on the stocking? No, it's giving me, what, what I do is I, I do it for aesthetics. So what is it going to look like kind of centered on this piece so I can see about the size that I want it to be? What I will also do to make sure that I can actually sew on it is I will, um, 
turn on the appropriate hoop. So whatever hoop can actually fit in the piece, uh -huh. not only fit in the piece, but fit in the piece with the lower arm fitting in the piece at the same time. Because there are hoops that can fit in this, but I can't get it on the machine. So um, keep that in mind as well. No, this is mostly for aesthetics. And then also um, I will put that hoop limit up to make sure that I'm, I'm sewing in an area that I think I can actually sew. Got it. Thank you. And then if I'm doing a ton of these stockings um, and I want everybody to be about the same, I will set up uh, the name kind of close to how I want it. Let's do a different alphabet. And let's bring this in just a touch. So I'll scale this about the way that I want it. And then I'll do this with envelope and shape it the way that I want. Now, another thing that I struggle with stockings is uh, stockings are very, very straight across. And I struggle with that, especially getting everything perfectly straight. Um, if you struggle with that as well, you can arch your lettering just a touch, and then nobody's going to know if it's not perfectly straight. Or you can just make sure that you have a reference line and use laser alignment. Either one of those are perfectly good options. <laughs> um, so now that I have this set up, and I'm using the envelope, I can come in and I can type my name, which is way longer. Again, I misspelled it. Don't tell my mother. Well, it's a Windows computer versus a Mac, right? No, I seriously cannot spell <laughs> my own name. There we go. So now it's following along that line. It's looking about like I want it to be, and it's squishing to that shape. So that's going to work really well for me. Um, typically, for something like this, I'm going to sew center out, which I have not set up yet. And, um, and Nate, just out of curiosity, why would you sew center out on something like this? I'm going to sew away from any anchor point. OK. Um, so anytime, let's see if I can make it happen so that you can see it. But anytime I, I have fabric, if I anchor to it and then sew towards it, I'm going to potentially sew a ripple of material, mm -hmm. which I don't want to do. So if I anchor something and then sew away from it, I'm pushing any ripples of material kind of out of my way where I'm not going to kind of crimp in a piece. Kind of like sewing a cap then. Sewing a cap is okay. the same way. Um, the same type of thing. If, there, if there's an anchor point in the stocking, I'm not entirely sure what that would be. Maybe you've got, I, I have done some that had like jingle bells down below and they were like really stuck to the hoop a certain way. Um, then you got to kind of manipulate around that a little bit, but you can totally make it work. Um, so yeah, I, I try to push away from things that I've sewn before. Um, so keep that in mind as well. Other things um, that are things to consider, sometimes you don't want to go across the top of a stocking. Sometimes you want to go down the stocking. Um, so you can do that too. And for that, you would just change your line type to a vertical line type. And then you can go down a stocking very, very easily. Um, other things, if you want to save um, on your stitch count a little bit, you've got um, kind of a bigger area that you're dealing with if you're going down the stocking. Maybe consider doing um, just the outline of the letter or a decorative stitch inside the letter and then sewing a different border. That's what we did um, with this one right here. Um, we have a, a decorative stitch on the inside of all the letters and then a, a metallic, uh, not magnetic, a metallic <laughs> thread. Um, magnetic thread would be cool. Yeah. A um, uh, metallic thread for that nice sheen to match that uh, rope around the top. To do that, um, one of the easiest ways for me to do something like that is to use a true type. And I know that sounds very different from what I normally tell you guys when you're dealing with embroidery, you know, use alphabets that are meant for embroidery. But because I'm converting it, I'm going to use that true type. I'm also going to use a typeface. And this is one that I found that has a lot of room on the inside. So that's going to be nice. I'm going to scale this about how I want it. And then, yeah, it looks a little funny right now. And if I go into 3D, it's going to look even funnier. But you can go to change element type. 
and change that to a complex fill. And that's going to even everything out. And then we could even uh, change this to be a decorative. And um, then we could also add a border. So one of the things that um, you can do with these decorative stitches and borders, um, you can save yourself stitches. You can add a unique effect with it. Um, so again, we saved a lot of stitches. It gave it kind of a quilted effect, which is a nice thing to look at. Um, but the easiest way to do all of that is with change element type again. So when I'm doing that, I'm, uh, I'm getting that uh, vector fill going, which makes my life a little bit easier. Give me a minute here. Nope, it does not like me. There we go, much better. So other things that we have um, with those uh, borders, again, uh, to make sure that things line up, you'll want to go um, the fill first, and then the border, and then the next fill, and then the border. And that will keep things from shifting too much. And that'll allow you to have kind of thinner, easier uh, time with it. Um, and it will, uh, pardon me, a thinner border and an easier time lining up because it's less likely to move when doing one letter as opposed to doing all of the letters and then all of the borders. So in theory, it sounds way more efficient to do all of one color and then do all of the next. But if it doesn't line up, it's not going to do you any good. So give yourself a break. Um, you're not changing out the machine. The machine's just swapping needles for you. So don't stress about that. Just let it do letter and then the border and then the letter and then the border. And that will make your life so um, the quality of, quality of sew out, you're saying, would be much better if you do it that way? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Um, other things, as far as we were talking about stitch savings, um, consider adding a little bit of applique. Um, we did another piece where we just appliqued some holly leaves onto a stocking, and they're actually loose um, so that you've only tacked down one edge. And I will get those files out there for you. I did not get that before the session started, but I will get those posted so that you can uh, do the same thing. All we did was sew them out, and then cut them out, and then it sewed the little circles for the holly. We taped the leaves where we wanted them to be, where they're all a little bit overlapped uh, underneath those berries. And then the berries are the things that are actually tacking that down. All right. Um, well, I deal with some of the rest of this. Do you want to talk about uh, hooping up, backing, toppings, those kinds sure. of things? Sure, yeah, you bet. So I'm going to jump back over. Excuse me for one second here. So what we're talking about, um, uh, while Nate looks at the computer here for a minute, um, uh, Nate yesterday did a really good job of putting joy on this stocking right here. And so... Um, what hoop would we use to do this? Well, uh, our good friends at Mighty Hoop just came out with some new hoops. Um, and uh, they're currently not in the Melka OS software, um, but on, we're hoping next week sometime we'll have a release of Melka OS that will include these hoops. So this one here um, is the 3x9 or the 9x3, depending on who you talk to. We like to go width first, then height, um, and some people like to go height, then width. So this guy here is awesome because it gives us a really skinny um, uh, hoop to work with. So I can get this. I already have a piece of, just so you guys see this, I've got a piece of tearaway backing underneath here. Um, definitely these stockings are pretty inexpensive stockings that we bought on Amazon. You know, one thing to talk about real quick before I show the hooping of this. Um, I look at Christmas stockings as two different flavors um, for, for the embroidery shop. One is friends and family come to you all the time. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I've been doing this for 20 some years and it never fails. I've got, I think 20 or 30 Christmas stockings. Hey, Mike, can you put our new daughter's name on here? Our new son-in-law's name? Puppy. Um, our new puppy, yes, we got. Rocco, this is uh, Chris Fenton's new pup name is Rocco, so we'll be doing this one later on for Chris. Not sure why Chris couldn't do it, but we're doing it, so it's all good, Chris. Um, 
But anyways, that's one flavor of Christmas stockings. The other one is, is if you think about it, and I like to, when, when I was in, uh, my wife and I, I don't know if I ever shared this with you guys. My wife and I actually owned our own shop at one time, um, and we had it, and the 4th of July, we had marked on our calendar to start advertising and purchasing wholesale Christmas stockings. I know that sounds way early, but majority of people, if, if you don't do that, um, so we're talking about the profitability side of our business now, you want to start advertising it, and especially the way that the, the um, internet helps sell. Um, you could get these out there, and you could get just a ton of business from Christmas stockings. Um, we used to make it a side project outside of our regular niche, and that would pay for our whole Christmas just by what we would do in Christmas stockings. It would buy the, you know, all the Santa presents out there. We would, uh, we would fund Santa Claus, wink, wink, um, for the year and everything else. So it, it can be very profitable side of business. Start thinking about that the 4th of July is when I used to think about it. Start advertising it so that you're not late to the game um, because if you're late to the game, more times than not, they've already figured it out or you're gonna deal with those customers that are last minute um, and will stress you out. And that's no fun either around Christmas. So back to doing this. Um, so once again, two flavors. One is um, your family and friends, um, uh, probably not a very profitable side of your business, but the other side is, is you can really make a good mint off of Christmas stuff. Not only stockings, but stocking hats. Um, we're talking about the uh, um, Christmas tree. What are those things called? Skirts. I always, skirts. I always call them a dress for some reason, but a skirt. They're a little shorter. So a little more ankle. Yeah, it, it's yeah, it's more of the uh, the '60s style Christmas <laughs> skirt than than the uh, formal gown for the Christmas tree. Um, but you know, anything Christmassy, you can do. Uh, like my uh, mother-in-law just made us a new uh, runner for our dining room table. Um, and I'm meaning to bring that in and, and do some monograms on it. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of other things that you can do uh, to personalize uh, for Christmas time. But I would start thinking about that if it's going to be a profitable side of your business. Start thinking about it around the 4th of July. And what Nate was showing you on the design, we'll show you here and again in a minute. Um, you know, he set up the design and then typed his in, in his name. I would suggest... Poorly. Uh, what's that? Poorly, I couldn't Poorly, spell it. Poorly, right. But I would suggest setting that up, and then when you get a, a, you know, a family worth of names in, you could just take and do group names with that um, and use that template um, to, to do that. So, um, yes, it looks like a lot of work that he was doing, but it's all in the preparation of the design. Um, and the one thing that I'm sure Nate will get to in a minute is all the underlay and densities to make sure that the the type of stocking, you know, we're talking a cheap stocking here versus uh, Mr. Fluffy here. Um, two different types of stitch quality or stitch dynamics that we would be using for these type of stockings, right, Nate? Close. Actually, the, the uh, new defaults that we added have been working really, really well. About yeah. the only thing that I would do differently on this is add a primer stitch. Yeah, like a primer coat of stitching. Um, just zigzag under or crisscross under itself, not zigzag. It's almost more of a lattice work, just to kind of tack down and and offset that a little bit. And I can show you guys how to do that. Um, but I also wanted to let you guys know in that folder that I totally didn't get up there for you. Um, I'm gonna have a couple of um, examples of templates that you can use. One with snowflakes, one with some holly. Cool. Do we um, want to jump back to the screen for two a with, Two with holly. Um, but yeah, if you want to swap out, I didn't know what size hoop you were using. Okay. We're planning on using. So if you can, since that's kind of a really important part, if you want to get started with that with one of those, I can set you up a name with the. Uh, so the we're going to do code. the name across the top uh, on one of these? Fuzzy ones, it's yep. up to you. I don't know what okay. you're doing. Okay. All right, cool. Um, so let me finish this. You're going, man, you told me all about this new Mighty Hoop and you Sorry. didn't finish that, Mike. Um, My fault. I, I have a tendency to get sidetracked, so I'm, I'm trying to stay focused here, not sweating about the little things. So. Um, we can slide this stocking in. You'll see that the uh, tearaway backing is on the top. Once again, yeah, this material is pretty stable. It doesn't have a stretch to it. We're going to be doing a uh, Facebook Live here in the next couple months in regards to backing. But 
One thing that I'd like to answer in a Q&A, and I'm kind of mixing the two together, so I apologize for this, but we always hear, when is it appropriate to use backing and when is it not appropriate to use backing? So in my opinion, the time that I use backing is if the material is either um, not stable, meaning that it'll have stretch either one way or both ways, um, and possibly even corners, and or the material is very thin. So we got to remember that we have a stitch coming down, connecting, so the top thread is coming down, connecting to our bobbin thread, and we've got to have enough thickness in the material to be able to have that knot tie, and if the material is too thin, what will happen is sometimes that knot will either come up on one of the sides, and or it will take and cause like a loop or a bubble stitch um, because of the thinness of the material. So in the case of this material, we're using some tearaway just to give the, uh, the material just a little bit more stability and we're trying to give it a little bit more thickness so that we get a really good quality stitch on it. So once I've got that in there and I've got it placed where I want it, um, the great thing about the Mighty Hoops, just make sure you've got the notch in the right place, top right hand corner. I can just take and snap that on and this hoop um, will be able to go onto the machine. Um, I love this hoop uh, with the Melco machine because of the size of the lower arm of the, the Melco machine. We can really uh, take advantage of getting into some places that are pretty dang thin. I can't get my, my hand in here with that hoop, but I can still get the, uh, the hoop arm in, um, and I'll show that to you, um, and, and be able to take and sew this. Now, we pre-sewed this design, um, but if we take and, can, can we get we the sewing? Again. Yep, you bet. So I'll take this off. Once again, we'll see the inside of the hoop, or inside of the sock. I can get that lower arm in there, and I can really take advantage of, um, you can see it's fairly tight. Um, I'm fairly confident on our older machines that had the, uh, um, the square, I don't know that I can do it, uh, the square lower arm versus the round lower arm, um, we wouldn't be able to do this. And, and on our competitors' machines, I'm fairly confident that they would not be able to get this stocking to sew. So it's, it's a really cool hoop. Once again, that's the 3x9 or the 9x3. Um, if you're looking for it, uh, it won't be in your hoop database yet. But we have um, hopefully a release, an update release of Melka OS version 11 happening next week that we'll add this one. And Nate reminded me that there's one other one. And this one is the 4x6 or the 6x4. So this one is wider horizontally uh, than it is tall. Um, yeah? Yeah. Um, so this one is also a, a very unique size. Um, I think that it, the reason it's unique is we're starting to see a trend in the market where we're wanting to get much wider than we are taller on the, on the left chest. Um, and I think this hoop, you know, the five and a half square, Nate, is one of my favorite Mighty Hoops. Um, in fact, it's so popular around here at Melco that every time we get one into the building, <laughs> somehow they take legs and walk back out of the building. So that's how popular they are. So check out this uh, four by six or six by four. Um, and so, yeah, let me jump back. Where, were, where did you want me to go, Nate? I'm, I remembered this, but I, now I forgot you. I need to know what you're going to hoop up with the fuzzy oh. so that I can set cool. that file up to actually <laughs> sew on the fuzzy. See, this is, this is why you only have one main operator in your, uh, in your operations, because Nate and I have a, a lot of fun together. By the way, Scott is here, too. Scott, say hi. Hello, everybody. So Scott's answering questions today for us. Um, so, uh, Nate, I will be doing the, if we could come over on the Sony cam. Yeah. Um, I will be using the Melco Fast Clamp, and let me just give some description. I'm using the middle-sized arms, the uh, middle-length arms, um, and I'm going to kind of answer a question as we're looking at this. Um, someone had mentioned on uh, the love of, for the love of Melco. By the way, it's a great Facebook page. If you're not a part of it, um, join it. It's uh, not Melco owned. Uh, it's it's. It's ran by uh, customers of Melco. Uh, but the question was is, why did Melco include three different size arms 
with the Melco Fast Clamp. And so the reason that we did that is to be able to get into pockets and actually be able to control the pocket, you would want to use the short arms. Um, in the case of the stocking, I wouldn't want to use the short arms because the, the short arms wouldn't allow me to get um, the, the width uh, that I want to get on this stocking. So I would only be able to control about this much material and the rest of the material would be flagging. So I wouldn't have a very good anchor like uh, Nate was talking about earlier. Um, I wouldn't want to use the long ones for the Christmas stocking because then I'm hooping using the very tip of the, uh, uh, of the arm. So it's very um, important that you get the material in there um, and that you, you don't have it hanging out anywhere that you would be doing sewing on it unless it's ultra stiff. So what you're telling me is it's a Goldilocks issue. You gotta get just the right arms for just the right job. Yeah, that's, that's a great way to put it. I've never heard of it that way, but, so yes, Nate, I will be using the <laughs> middle size arms. Um, just right. In the 11 centimeter position. Okay. And um, so yeah, if we can jump back over to the middle camera. Um, what I like to do is, we kind of hit this at Christmas. Um, I will take and create a, a couple pieces of tape. I'll reuse these tapes, by the way. Um, but, and then let's go to the uh, table camera. Table. And so on my tape, um, I don't know if you can see it, but I have name on there. And I'm gonna take and actually position where I want that name to be. So typically we would want it to be the length of our name. Um, I had done one earlier uh, for my middle daughter, Ray, um, and her name was a little bit shorter. So you can see that I was able to get that straight um, and the reason that I put this on is yes, we could do the hooping on the fast clamp like this. My only concern about that is the lower arm um, and the hook is actually pushed right up against all this material. So it, it's faster, but it does limit you. Yeah, it's faster, but it, it limits you and the risk is uh, much greater that the material could potentially get sucked into the hook area. Um, um, I'll tell you a little story if we go back to the, uh, the room cam. So uh, before I was a Melco customer, or, or Melco employee, I was a Melco customer, um, had an EMT 10T. Um, I had had it for two years. I had never had a problem uh, sewing things and getting things stuck into the hook. Um, one day, uh, it was Christmas time, uh, I had a customer that had a whole bunch of hoodies that needed to be done and I took the shortcut way of doing some of them instead of holding the, uh, the laces out of the way. Usually I'll tape those down so that, um, you know, and once again, I'll use the tape over and over, but I decided not to do that to save some time. And the lace of one of the hoodies got sucked into the hook and, and jammed my machine. And I thought, oh my God, I've got a week worth of work to do in two days before Christmas and my machine is down. Luckily, um, Melco service, even back then, was great. Was able to talk me through how to get that back out, retime my machine, I was back up and running in a couple hours. But mor moral of the story is, don't take those risks. Take a couple extra seconds to take something like the stocking, and we're just going to take and turn it inside out. And the reason that we put the name on there is so that we still recognize which direction and that which name. And which side. And which side, yes, that's a good point too. So yes, this is how I'm gonna do it, Nate. Okay. You back? Uh, yeah. Tag, so, you're it. Um, so I'm sorry, what did you tell me that was? It's the 11. Okay. So let's go back to the computer and let's take a look at this. So Mike told me the 11 fast clamp, so I wanna make sure that I have that up here. Um, I don't have this in my list right now, so I just need to go turn that on. Um, right now everything's showing in inches and 11 is not going to show up that's actually in metrics. So I'm going to go to options, measurement units, and I'm going to turn my hoops to centimeters just so that I make sure I'm doing what I think I am because I've not had enough coffee to do the math right. So I'll scroll down real quick. Um, oh, I lied. The 11 was on. Yeah, I turned it on earlier today. Look at you. That is not it. That is it. All right, so. With that picture back up, could you go back in? Um, so can you explain with the mouse, uh, when, when we're looking at what size we have the 
fast clamp set at, where the, the markings on the, on the clamp itself, should the markings be on the outside of that, uh, that silver block of the clamp or inside? So the markings will only line up one way. Um, they'll be on the outside. And you can make them line up the other way, but they won't fit into the grooves that are underneath here. So as you slide these, if you loosen these just a bit, you'll feel a click every time. Um, and so they'll line up on the outside over here. And that doesn't actually measure the distance between the arms. It actually measures the distance of the sew field itself. OK. So with the Melco Fast Clamp, whenever you're looking at the numbers, you know the width of the snow field just by looking at it. Cool. All right, so I'm going to hit OK. This name, too big for this. Just not going to work. I only have so much room. That is part of it with dealing with stockings like this. Can I do something smaller? Or can I, can I fit a huge name on a stocking? Uh, maybe not the way that you would think. So you may have to do a little bit of adjusting. Um, this is one of those templates that I want to get to you guys. I'm going to scale this down just a touch to make sure that we fit. Bring this in just a bit. And then, by the way, as Nate is doing that, if you have any questions at all, not just Christmas stocking or Christmas theme, um, if you have any questions at all, please post them in the comments, and we'll do our best to get those answered. There we go. And so once again, the uh, the template that you're using right now, Nate, um, we'll be able to post that up, and yeah. our customers will be able to have that, anybody that's listening or watching us at this time? Yeah. Awesome. I'll get that up there. Um, I meant to do it before I got in here, and shockingly enough, I got distracted. Um, probably by Mike Dill. Probably. I really wish I would have brought that ruler in here like I thought I did. Um, the tops of these stockings, we've got about four inches. I just want to make sure that this is actually going to fit the way that I think it is. Oh, yeah, we're good. Um, so now that I have this and it's going on that super fuzzy uh, bit, what I, what I want to consider doing is giving myself a little bit of a, like I said, a primer stitch underneath to make sure that this sews well. Um, to do that, you can do it a few different ways. One, you can convert everything to fills. So if everything is a fill, You can choose a fill and go to object and offset the outline by a certain amount. Now I do this backwards every time. Nope, got it right this time. So positive is a little bit bigger. I usually do 10 points to 20 points bigger. And then I will lighten that density up a ton. Sorry. Uh, um, Nate like is that. doing that. Uh, I just wanted to mention that there is a special going on in the fast clamps through the end of today. Um, I believe that is free shipping, um, and I will look up the, the percentage off as Nate's doing this. Also, um, Samantha, shout out to Sam. She's a part of our applications team here at Melco, Samantha Maribal. Um, Sam had done a really good uh, document write-up on um, this uh, primer stitch. Um, we had it a different name at the time. Unfortunately, we found out that that name was kind of uh, copyrighted, so we're using what's called the primer uh, stitch now is what Melko was calling it. So we'll get the uh, link to that document of Samantha's and, and put it up here as well. So all I did uh, while Mike was talking about that was I just duplicated my lettering, I drag it down here so you guys could see what I was doing a little bit. Um, I turned it into a complex fill using change element type. And what I'm doing is I'm going in and deleting the holes. And I'm actually doing this kind of the hard way, sorry. Um, you can do it this way a little bit easier just by grabbing these and hitting delete. And that does go a little bit faster, except when you 
lose track and delete the whole thing. Just don't tell. <laughs> we won't. Don't tell. Um, I'm also used to a tin key, and I'm struggling on this laptop keyboard. So again, sorry. So what I did is created this fill that is a little bit bigger than the lettering that is going on top of it. And what that will do is kind of tack down all that fuzz so that I can give myself a cleaner look overall. Now, uh, the big thing for me when I do this is, and I'll just give it kind of that halo. The big thing for me, do I or do I not use Solvi with this piece? Um, or water soluble topping, sorry. Um, and that's, that's a bit of a challenge for me. Typically when I'm doing this, I will not. I will sew it first and I will do it in a color that matches the top. And then, so. Just for review so that I make sure that I'm following you as well as. I'm going to do it in bright pink so you guys can see it. This uh, under stitch, this primer stitch, um, can you explain, I'm going to put cameras on there. Can you explain what that's going to do? So what I'm looking to do really is just tack down the fur on oh, okay. this top so that it gives it a smoother area. I'm not dealing with all of these little fuzzies kind of coming up through the edges of my letters. So, so it like will. What with Ray, I've got a little bit of fuzz showing through on the lettering and that would hold it down if I would have done that. A little bit. Honestly, this is working fairly well for this. I've seen way funkier stuff. This yeah, is I, where. I've done a double zigzag and an edge lock to get that. To nice. To hold down that mass, so. so for me, for something like this, I would do the tack down of all of that nap first, and then I would uh, lay down my water soluble topping. I would tape it in place on the edges so that it doesn't curl back on itself because I am the king of that. Makes me crazy. You go to the edge, I don't give myself enough room, and then it curls back and then sews on itself, and no, not worth it. So a great question out of that that I hear a lot is, do I have to hoop the water soluble uh, or the solvy? when I'm using it. If you can, yeah, it definitely helps with holding all the edges and whatnot. My struggle with it is I often use tape for my placement, and then if I put the solvy down, I can't get to the tape. Or pins. So, or or pins. <laughs> I don't do pins. I don't want to sew over metal. That's, that's I'm, your thing. I'm not that brave. Um, okay, great. So yeah, I have this set up. The other thing that I will do is I will shorten my stitch length, which is just going to pull those stitches down a little bit more. Awesome. Sorry, really struggling with no tin key. All right, and then am I going to do it with the pine needles? I don't think so. So I'm going to leave the, the holly and whatnot alone. Okay. And you've got the pine needles that will sink down in a little bit. I think that'll give it a little bit more realistic appearance. Cool. Um, and then ready just center it. that up. I'm getting excited. All right. Uh, I did not rotate it. I did not do any of that. I'll take care of it. So I'm going to get out of your way. You can send that to the machine. All right. Let us switch gears here. And I'm a little annoyed that I can spell your name right and not my own. Well, mine's pretty easy compared to uh, Nathaniel. So, or were you just spelling name? No. Well, that would just yeah. <laughs> I couldn't even spell name earlier. Okay. So um, as I'm doing this, um, once again, this material is pretty stable. I'm still going to use a piece of tearaway behind it. One other thing that um, a lot of people will do is that even if the material is stable, if there's a chance that you may screw something up, and if I if I screwed this up, I probably am not going to be able to save it because of the uh, um, the lap or the, uh, the the fur on the top. But if you had a piece of tearaway or cutaway behind, um, if you had full stitches, um, that will save you from damaging the inside of the garment more times than not. So another reason to use backing um, uh, in case you think that you, you really don't need to. So let me grab a piece that has already fell. Oh, my, thank you. Is it on now? Yeah, yep. it, is, it is. Sorry about that. So once again, I wasn't going to use backing here. I am going to use a piece um, uh, just to give it a little bit more stability. And my point on that was is on some materials, like a denim shirt would be a good example. Um, I probably 
didn't need to use backing, but I will just in case I ever needed to pull the stitches for some reason, that backing will give me something to cut those stitches out against instead of cutting it right against the, the garment. So I'm gonna just take and use my pair of scissors that always have legs that I always set down so in your back pocket. They, no, that's Scott. No, that's me too. That's, that's you too. So I'm gonna just take and cut. A lot of people will try to fold this and stick inside. I feel it's just easier to, and I'm messing up Nate's pretty table here. Very festive. Um, so I'm going to just stick my backing in there before I go over to the machine. Um, and then if you'll see that, and maybe I'll come over to the Sony cam here for a minute, um, and I'll just show that. I don't think we're on that camera. No. Nope. And you know what? If I go to a wide shot and we're not on that camera, it doesn't do anything. There we go. So you'll see that I've got the tearaway hanging out a little bit, um, and then I've got my name. Uh, the way that it needs to go. So then over here, another thing about the fast clamps is always make sure when it's not in use and you take the product out, um, do not leave it open. Um, if you leave it open and move it around, it's a very good chance that it's going to grab the, um, the grabber, the thread grabber, um, and potentially pull your, um, your needle case off. Um, so same thing goes for the uh, HoopTech um, slimline clamp. It's, it's a very good system as well, but any time that I'm not using this system or I unhoop it and I'm not rehooping it immediately, I will make sure that my habit is closing the arms. Do not leave them open. Now my difference between those two is with the Melco Fast Clamp, I will close the clamps, but I won't like fully... Fully close them? Right, because that is Once? what I was told to do by the engineers that made it. That, that's a good point. There's some foam down here um, that if you leave it closed uh, all the time, um, it could potentially do damage. You know, another point, could we zoom in just a little bit more? Um, I want to talk about the Melco fast clamps. Um, you'll notice on your fast clamp that the tip um, will actually touch first before uh, the back part does. And we did that on purpose, the way that the engineers developed them is naturally um, the fulcrum, which is this point back here that pivots open and close, that's where you usually get the most tension or the most um, uh, uh, grip on the material. Um, and then typically it's very weak out at the edge or the, the point. So the engineers had the bright idea of making it so that those two touch first and then as it closes that tension stays really nice and tight. And if it's, if it's too much, that can be adjusted with the height adjustment of, yep, that guy right there that you're... Yeah, let me see if I can get around this way. <laughs> that one. So uh, this guy here, yeah, you can definitely adjust it. You don't want to make it... I've also seen some shops where they make them so dang tight that, you know, by after doing it a couple times, you would have carpal tunnel. It shouldn't be that tight. It should just be tight enough to hold the material in place. Absolutely. So I'm going to go ahead and open these up. And I'll go ahead and slide this guy on. And I just want to make sure that I'm straight on both sides. And you'll notice what I'm doing is um, I'm doing kind of my cap um, gauge or cap hooping method where I'm holding down below. I don't know if you can see that, but um, I'm, I'm holding the material down below as I close the clamp so that I have that material nice and tight. Uh, and once again, I am not putting the, uh, the Solvi in yet. Um, I'm going to leave the Solvi out, and we're going to jump over to the computer for a minute. And we'll go ahead and send this design over to that machine. And we're on machine two. Now, the way that the uh, design is right now, uh, we would be sewing upside down. So I'm going to click on the F. If you click on it twice, Fairly quickly, you won't have to wait for it to load sideways and then up and down. Um, so once I have that loaded, I'm going to go ahead and set my color sequence. So I'm going to clear all of here real quick. And another neat little trick is I'm going to pull my uh, settings box over a little bit or settings window over. And if I clear my color sequence and I click on step forward, I can walk through each color. So instead of having to look down here 
and try to remember which color that is. So that pink is the, um, the primer stitch. That's gonna be in white. White is on needle five. Step forward, next is the, uh, the darker green, which is gonna be on needle two. Step forward, and you can see how this kind of helps. So um, color three is going to be a little bit lighter green, which we're gonna use number four. Step forward, number five is the, uh, what are these berries? I always Holly. get them mixed up. Mixed up. Holly, so we're gonna use red for that. 15. 15, thank you. And the last color is also probably 15? Nah, do nine. Do nine, okay. And now any time using that feature, let's say I need to go backwards, I can actually back up in the design as well. So this is a, a nice way, if you haven't colorized your color palette and you need to walk through the parts of the design, the step forward and step back are a really neat feature in, in Melka OS. Um, this is, that's not a feature in Bravo OS, but in Melka OS I can use that. So once I have those colors set, the only thing else I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and back all the way up for a minute. After I do this uh, um, primer stitch, I'm gonna wanna put a hold in so that I can lay down my, my water sol soluble material, right? Yeah, now one thing I do wanna tell you is you'll notice that Mike is currently selecting where he wants that to go. So step forward and step back does not move your selection at all. So as you're showing and hiding those layers, that's not where you are in the color sequence. So if you need to go back, you can just click where you want it to be and add those colors. But it is nice in seeing how things lay out. Cool, yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. I use that step forward and step back almost any time I'm dealing with like a DST design, non-colorized design that I, I really need to be able to see those colors. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply, okay. Um, another important feature, and I'm gonna move this uh, stocking as nice as it looks up there. I can't see that side of the screen. <laughs> um, and I'm going to talk about the minimum presets. Um, while I'll Nate go back to it. Sorry, I realized it. that the threads were not at all correct. So I was it's trying good. to swap that out. So you want that back on computer? Yeah, on the computer for a minute. So it's really important um, to get your minimum preset of auto mode set correctly. And, and a lot of people, um, I don't think have quite grasped what that minimum is. So it is the actual thickness by tenths of a millimeter. So one point equals a tenth of a millimeter. And so I've, I've looked at the, uh, the stocking and I believe that it's eight tenths of a millimeter thick. So I'm gonna set that minimum preset to eight tenths. The maximum is not so important. Um, if, if you start to see that the, uh, um, the number up here, this 10, you can't set, but if you see that number start cruising up towards 30, 40, 50, then you probably have a TVS setting um, that's too high and needs to be adjusted. So I would read, um, and we'll put a, a link on there of how to set TVS um, afterwards. I'll get that posted up there for you, but uh, make sure that you set your min minimum preset like you would um, thinking about the thickness of the material. And we'll talk about that I, as we start to sew. I, I would actually look at that second. I would look at how well did you hoop and is it flagging and being squirrely and giving kind of funky oh. feedback first. So what Nate is talking about is that if the TBS is crawling up, make sure that you look to make sure that the material is taut in the hoop, um, that the bobbin uh, thread has not come loose, the tension is loose or way too tight. Um, before you start adjusting that TVS setting. That's a good point, good point. All right, so now that we have everything set up there, um, we are going to cruise over to the machine. And I should be able to take and adjust this guy to where, and I'm gonna move my, uh, um, my grabber in so I can see this, um, that I have my name kind of in the right place. And then we can go ahead and do a trace. Oh, that's tight. Yep, she's right up against it, but I will make it work. So now that we know we're in the right spot, um, I'm gonna go ahead and close this. Now is when I would take and lightly pull uh, my name off. Um, let's talk about uh, um, the uh, presser foot height. On this material, even though 
it's way thick. I wouldn't put my presser foot all the way up. I would set my presser foot as if the snap wasn't there. So I would bring my presser foot all the way down and probably one, two, maybe three clicks up tops. So I'm, I'm at three clicks up. So uh, you were talking about how thick it is. It doesn't, if you push it between your fingers and, and kind of pinch it lightly, that's what we're looking for more than yep. with all of its fluff and all of its, what I, it's kind of like, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like getting a Persian cat wet. All it just goes <laughs> nothing. <laughs> kind of the same thing here. You want it in the like bare bones kind of. No, oh, good, good point. All right, so we're ready. We're going to go ahead and sew down that nap stitch. Uh, I'm sorry, the primer stitch. I'll get the naming right, I promise. Um, and so we're going to, it's going to move over to the white. I panicked. I thought I left the pin trollers up, but I didn't. <laughs> And on the, um, on the fast clamp, uh, I would say max speed on it would be about 1,100 stitches a minute. Um, probably more in the 900 to 1,000 stitch range, but right now we're set at uh, 1,100. And so you can see that it's going through. I don't know if the light might be kind of causing that deflection of light to not be able to see that, but it's taking and pulling that nap down so that we have kind of an even surface for the uh, water sol soluble material to kind of sew against um, as well as the rest of the design. So I will grab a piece of my Solvi. Uh, another trick is, is when you get a bag of Solvi, um, I would suggest putting it in a Ziploc bag. A um, couple things will happen. Um, here in Colorado, it's very dry, and these things are like a sheet of Elmer's glue, is what I like to call it. They almost smell like Elmer's glue. They become very stiff and brittle, and they kind of lose their effect if they dry out. As, um, as opposed to where I'm from in the summer, they would turn into goo bleh, yeah. on top of the machine. Probably look like a booger. Yes, I said sure. booger. <laughs> um, so now, so take these and put them in a Ziploc bag, and every time you use it, Make sure that you push all the air out and then tighten that Ziploc back down, okay? So we're gonna take this, I'm gonna bring my handy tape over. Always try to use some painter's tape instead of the masking tape so that you're not damaging the product using that. And we're just gonna take and lay that on there. And I'm gonna just take a couple pieces of tape and tape against the, um, the red part of the fast clamp. And I know, I know I said I didn't want it to fold back over itself, and I, I don't, but I'm also, when I do this, I, I don't try to pull it too, too tight, because if I do, it creates kind of a drum effect, so it sounds a little bit louder, and it will start to tear before you're really done sewing. Yeah, so you'll see on this stuff that it's got a little bit of looseness either direction. That's what Nate's talking about. You don't want to pull it super tight, because if you did that, like he said, when you start to sew, the, um, it'll have a tendency to just rip and you lose the effect of the Solvi. So now that we have that down, um, so what I did to make the machine pause for a moment so I could do that, can we jump back over to the computer? Sure. I, I, I did it, but I didn't mention it. Um, we had taken and put a hold into the color sequence after um, that primer stitch so that we're able to have the machine pause. The, the hold, um, will only happen where you place it. So um, we could use an applique, um, but when I use the fast clamp, I prefer to use the hold so that the whole um, fast clamp's not moving out towards the, uh, um, the needle case. I prefer to do that whenever I'm dealing with any um, very cylindrical object that has seams in it. Mm. just to prevent it from catching and pulling a little bit, to just leave it where it is. Yeah, so the hold is a, a really good tool to start using. So if you're not using that and you have something in the middle of a design, like you need to change a, a cone of thread or you need to add something like applique material or, or solvy down, uh, start using that hold. Um, so now we'll go back to sewing. And I apologize. Usually it doesn't take this long, guys. We're just trying to explain everything as we go. Um, and so now with that solvy down, We'll go ahead and start sewing. And so I believe the first part of the design that it'll start sewing is actually the, uh, the green leaves. What is that? Is that holly also? Pine? I almost wish. 
we're not we don't have a long arm on this guy I would just like to be able to sh let them see it maybe if I hold that down a little bit or here I'll set it up we can okay so meanwhile while he's doing that I'll uh, I'll just briefly talk um, this guy here is another one that Nate hasn't shown us yet, but he pre-sewed uh, the pine leaves and then he applicate them on with the holly berries, um, which is pretty cool. So you get kind of that 3D effect. Um, I think will that be a design that is included? That's, yeah, I gave both of those. But look what I found. I found glittery felt. That could be fun in there too. That's pretty hip. So metallic thread with that. One thing about metallic thread that I want to mention while this is sewing is never use um, adhesive backing with metallic thread. Why not? Horrible idea because the um, the metallic thread is like barbed wire and the barbed wire will take and pull that adhesive up into the needles so it'll gum the needles up. Um, so yeah, don't do that. Scott was asking me a question. And what was that question? He was asking, can you take uh, expanded shapes and whatnot, so like the, the letters that are sold as an alphabet, but they're individual stitch files, can you yep. throw those into your custom shapes? Yeah. Why not? Yeah, why not? The, uh, so the reason- be more custom designs than custom shapes? Custom designs, yeah. My only concern with that would be is don't oversize it. Um, you know, yeah. keep it within like 10, 15% tops of its original size because would, you might lose it it would be a complete drag and drop for me yep so yeah this is looking awesome um other questions scott do we have any other ones okay um so i want to while this is going on um nate if we could jump over to the computer screen for a minute um i just want to show a feature that a lot of people don't know about um the grabber on the machine if you prefer to have the grabber in when the machine is at an idle state, um, you can go into Tools, Settings, and under the Machine tab, there is a Grabber In at Trim. And so what that'll do is instead of the Grabber being out all the time when it's in an idle state, it will actually leave the Grabber in an in state, um, uh, guarding the needles uh, so that the material doesn't get snagged on the needles or and or your hands would get snagged on that so i prefer to have that grabber in at trim it's a pretty cool feature so check it out and see what you think and meanwhile we're sewing over here still let me see if i have other questions that i had written down that we haven't answered yet um yeah, so the way, the method that we use to hoop this um, stocking, you could do that with a round hoop instead of just uh, the fast clamp. So if we could, if we could jump over to the, um, I'm gonna put on the table. table, that would be great. Um, and what I'll do is I will grab. Or, or not round. Or not round, yeah. Or not round, squares work. Okay, yeah. Um, do you want to jump in on that no, one? No, just, that one just fit earlier this morning. Okay. Um, if, you're, if you don't have specialty hoops and you just have the, the stock hoops that came with um, your system, this is the, um, the 15 centimeter. Let's see if this one will work. Um, this one is pretty dang tight. That's so I've, one of the ones I was talking about where you can fit the hoop but not the hoop and the lower arm. The and machine. the lower arm. So you probably would want to go to the 12 centimeter. So here's the uh, 12 centimeter. And... Um, Let's move some of this stuff out of the way, make even more of a mess out of poor Nate's. Uh, I should have thought about more of a work area. Work area, it's all right. You should have realized that you're dealing with me, right? We have so. a new table coming soon. Yeah, we're getting a <laughs> new, new table coming We're getting soon. a new room. It's going to be awesome. So I can't wait for you guys to see it. So um, I still would use my uh, tearaway backing, and we'll actually hoop up a um a stocking that's not done yet maybe we'll do uh rocco's Rocco. so rocco's is going to get to use a normal hoop so still have my tear away in there um the way that i'm hooping this i could actually hoop a uh, a regular stocking cap this way as well um the stocking that i have to reverse i could hoop this way as well 
Um, and yes, you could use, uh, you could take and use some adhesive to hold that tear away against it. I'm a fan that if the adhesive is not needed, don't use it because all it does is start gumming things so up. I am going to hop in here before sure. we do that. One thing I will do, as long as we're still now we're from both sides of the table, that's not confusing at all. <laughs> I will tape just the top to oh. the backing sometimes. Yep. That way the adhesive isn't, you're not dealing with adhesive and needles, but you are holding a little bit better. So you'll see that I'm hooping that uh, tearaway backing as well, all the way through the hoop. Even though just the uh, um, stocking itself is partially hooped, that, uh, that backing is going to give us that strength that we need. I'm going to use these two points on this round hoop. And once again, this is just a standard hoop that comes with the machine. Um, there you go, you can see that we've got a, uh, a hooped stocking using a standard hoop. So in, you know, just in case you don't have the coolness factor of the Melco fast clamp, you can take and use uh, um, the hoops that came with it and do the same thing. So it is possible. Nice, so we're finishing up. I think we're on the last letter. Okay. Um, but can you show, once that's done moving and the sharp things have stopped, <laughs> can you show how to take that back off of there? Sure, you bet. So the first thing I'm going to do is I will take and loosen up or take off the, uh, um, the pieces. Um, and once again, we're talking about the grabber in. I'm going to take and move that in. I'll take and uh, loosen up the two arms and then just pull this straight off. Uh, and then, let's see here. If I can, what do you want to do? just so that I can show it a little bit without being at an odd angle here, um, I'm going to just take, for right now, I'll take and just pull this Solvi off as much as I can. Um, the one bad thing about Solvi is, is the remnants of it. No, it's not bad. <laughs> um, there's some easy ways to do it. So we're going to just take and pull the stocking back the way it should be. You're on this table. Yeah, the table would be great. And so I'm going to, before I do that, I'll take and remove the, uh, um, the tearaway. And it's always good to try to do as nice a job removing, even though it's on the back side, um, it's always good to try to, to make the product uh, clean and quality all the way around, right? So there we've got that. Let's just get this. Oh, that stocking sheds. Yeah, There's it's. buzz flying everywhere in here. I have it everywhere. So um, there you go. Uh, that should show pretty well. Yeah. Um, if we could go to the main camera. Sure. And so, yeah, that's, that's that is how we do a stocking. Nice. Thank you so much, Mike. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. If you have any questions, please remember to comment them in. I hear Scott typing frantically away in the background, so he is answering those as well. Cool. And next week, uh, I believe Scott is doing a Facebook Live on? Different types of non-poly threads. So we're going to be talking about thread types. So, so what I really just heard was you're going to say everything we didn't say about how to use metallic thread? <laughs> just a small portion. Just a small portion. <laughs> Fermilana, rayons, frosted mat, great. So uh, any of those to add extra depth and dimension to your designs, I think, are, are a nice touch. And he's got all the magic. Awesome. So last thing from me is uh, the Melco Fast Clamps are on sale through the rest of today. Um, we did a Facebook Live on those specials last week, the XT uh, certified pre-owned. So if you have any questions on that stuff, give Melco Sales a call. And people more are loving. people are loving. Awesome. So you have a wonderful rest of the week. And if there's any other questions, let us know. Have a great day. Thanks.